Okay, and here we go. Time for another build and got something special today. So, this is the Ravel, uh, Ravel Germany Unimog RW1, which is the fire truck version of the Mercedes Unimog truck. Now, if you're not familiar with the Unimog, it's a super cool machine <laughs> because it is it is just a beast of a workhorse. Uh, if you were not aware, uh, Mercedes actually has a, a really robust uh, heavy vehicle uh, segment of their manufacturer, and the Unimog is one of them. Um, the Unimogs are commonly used for all sorts of utility purposes. They robust four-wheel drive. Um, they have onboard pneumatics, everything, which usually has power couples in the front and rear. I imagine for the fire truck, that's all vented or shunted towards the uh, firefighting apparatus. But, uh, you know, I saw this and well, here it is, <laughs> but this looks to be a really neat kit. I even, and it's, it's 124 scale. Uh, we do have 236 parts. It is a, uh, rather large box. And as you'll see, as we go through the sprues, there's quite a bit in here. Yes. First big question. It does come with the open sides. So all the equipment bays are open and we get to build up that detail. So let's continue our tour around the box. We have some more artwork, but on the back, this is the really neat part because as I've said before, I always love to have details of an actual kit, built kit. And here we go. We got the truck and we have some of the zoom ins on the detail. Yes, it does have opening doors. Love that too. Uh, and then they show you a, a quick snap of the parts content. So, and I'll have JPEGs of this stuff after the intro. So that's enough of that. Let's take the box away and see what we get. So first up, we have the typical uh, Revell Germany instructions. Uh, if you are not familiar with these, these are really nice. And we'll just take a detour for a moment to look at some decals. Now, depending, you can build this for a number of different fire services across Europe. So they give you uh, some variations on marking. I can tell you right off the bat, I will be doing this one right here, which is the Hamburg Fire Brigade, Hamburg, where my father was born. So there we go. But we do get for all the versions, we get gauge decals, we get all these really nice warning and uh, statistical placards, things like that. So it's a nice decal set. So yeah, let's talk about some of these instructions. Now, unlike the Revell USA instructions, which are your typical black and white uh, fold-out sheets, we get all sorts of paint call-outs here. Uh, we get sprue maps. And when we get into the actual assembly, the Revell Germany manuals tend to be a little bit longer. Here we're up to step 57, but they, they break the assembly down to just, uh, you know, one or two things per step. So they're always very clear. Never had a problem with these. Always uh, good. They have the paint call outs in there. As you go through, like here, we have this. Uh, what I tend to do, because they have the actual paints listed up front in, you know, all the many languages, this place will be, this kit will be shipped. I usually go through and I make a little cheat card with the letter and then for the actual color that it is supposed to represent. So we do have a full engine on this one, which is great. We have chassis detail. We have, sorry, got lost for a minute. <laughs> we have uh, going into the body, we have our full interior. Since those doors are opening, that is nice to see. We get should get some really good detail in there. And then we move on to the fire equipment body. And you can see lots of pieces going into there. 
with all their paint outs. I guess we even get the drawers that go in there. So that's that's pretty neat stuff. We do get the grates for the top. I mean the guide rails. And adding more equipment. Yet more equipment. Ha <laughs> ha. And then the final finish. So last but not least, we get our uh, decal callouts facing which you want to build, which version. So this would be Altena. And you'll see there is just a slight color variation, Hansestadt Hamburg. This is the one I will be following. And uh, Karlsruhe Lohne. And last but not least for the Netherlands. So there we go. Now this kit is nice. Well, for a number of reasons, <laughs> but they do give you some extra things here. So we get our standard clear parts, which of course I'm going to leave in there. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of windows in this, but we do get all the marker lights and everything else. And those look nice and clear. We get, which is great, we get clear blue for the different uh, sirens and whatnot. We get this piece, which I assume is supposed to be some type of tubing for the fire hose. It has almost a cloth feel to it, but as you can see, very flexible. We even get some yellow wire. Not sure where exactly that is going to go. I didn't see that right when I was looking at the instructions, but good to see nevertheless. We get four really nice tires. Now, after doing all the tire cleanup on the uh, Salvino's Blue Max, it will be nice to see that. I don't really have to do any here except maybe just to scuff up the tread, but that's a real nice block tread pattern. You can see there's just a faint seam line running around it. They are branded for a Dunlop. So that's good stuff. Now, here we go. First observation, it is molded in the red. And I got to tell you, looking at it, they did a really nice job with the uh, color molding on this. Unfortunately, it's going to have a big nub mark in front because of this point of attachment. That's too bad. Um, just thinking... You know, if you want, you could probably go through this kit and not have to paint it. I'm most likely going to be painting. <laughs> so, but we do get it. The cab it looks nice. Now we get this big sprue here. We have our frame right here. So you can see it builds up to a pretty sizable vehicle here. And on here we have our engine parts and pneumatic bags, wheel backs and fronts, differentials, driveline system, dashboard, all sorts of stuff on here. So lots of parts, good detailing. There we go. That looks good. Now we'll move into a red sprue. And here we have the interior floor but we also have our doors seats the front grill and the parts also look pretty clean these are the bolsters for the seats and we get a door and just holding it up that looks like a pretty good fit so that is nice to see I like to do that because the better the piece lays in there right off the bat, probably the better the hinge will work when it's time to mount it and have the opening door. Now, also in red, we do get the parts for the uh, fire utility box. Uh, we do have the sliding shutter in the rear that will have to be painted for these two sides. That will have to be painted, um, at least black washed in there to bring up the detail on the slats, but nicely detailed. And this will be the open side where we get to see everything in there. Some nice diamond plate molding. So that is looking good. But wait, there's more. We get some white molding, which is nice because any version of the truck has white parts. 
So here we get the white bumper. The interior is supposed to have white in it, so we get some white for the doors. Those are the door insides. Uh, most of the other stuff on here will need to be painted, obviously, but we got those front fenders. Now on here we do have some flash, but it just looks along the edges. It doesn't seem to be that bad, so we'll have a some minor cleanup on that. Then we go into this grayish metallic, which, um, you know, if you wanted to leave this, if you didn't want to go and, and do a whole paint build, um, I guess this would work. However, you know, all your little equipment, like your chainsaw and... You know, the, the parts in the, the drawer bins here um, without paint, you know, they're really not going to look very good. And you won't be able to appreciate them, the winch pieces here. So, painting is in order, but you know what? It's nice to see that uh, for someone who is not into painting, they could still build the kit. Uh, and then here we go. This is our last brew. So we get the two big slide up doors for the side. We get some more diamond plate molding. And we have our rescue boat. We get our sets of ladders, some more equipment drawers. I'm guessing these might be drawer bottoms or doors. Who knows? We'll see. And uh, some more diamond plate. So there we go going to keep the intro section a little bit shorter today because it will probably be a longer build and then we also get this great piece which i believe is going to be trimmed to form the headlight grills which we can see on the instructions right down here so that's a nice addition as well yeah so this looks to be a good building kit Ah, that's probably where the yellow wire comes in. Oh, they have it in black here. So maybe I'll get some black wire and then I don't have to worry about painting it. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, and you'll see they have, uh, although the parts are molded in gray, we do have more of a metallic look on them, which um, my Rust-Oleum uh, silver metallic will take care of all of that. So there we go. The Ravel Schlingmann Unimog RW1. Neat machine. Opening doors, all the equipment detail. Let's get started. All right. Okay, so here we are with the snow report. So, uh, did the cleanup. Fortunately, uh, the parts were pretty much as, as clean as I had thought, and this little bit of nonsense here is all I had to take off to get the parts to uh, what I am happy with. So that's always the key point, getting the parts to where you are happy with them. Uh, and this is what I have. Now, the color rendering, particularly the red, as I had said before is very nice on the plastic and if you are not one for painting um, you, you could probably get away with not painting the kit however uh, if you're at the point where you're ready to tackle a kit like this I would think you already are comfortable with painting so you know I'm not really sure if it's an issue but uh, while I'm on that point though you know when I was doing the cleanup there are little bits of flash here and there. There were two pretty significant uh, parting lines on the cab shell on either side of the front here. Uh, I had to, to clean those up. And, you know, if you are one where you do not want to paint, you know, you are going to have these uh, blemishes that you're imparting on the plastic as you do your cleanup. And also, one thing that I found really... Uh, odd here is right on the front here and I hope it comes out on camera if you remember in the opening video you saw there was a big piece of injector sprue still on there and you know obviously that had to come off and um, 
it was a really big attachment point, <laughs> you know, and it had already partially uh, cracked a bit in the shipping of the kit. So this was a little bit of a messy cleanup. Now, again, obviously, if you don't want to paint, that's going to be an issue to uh, just from the, the point of, you know, kit engineering and uh, why they decided to put it right there on the Rudolph's red nose, <laughs> you know, of the, the cab shell. Um, kind of an interesting decision from Ravel. Um, you know, you could have put it in a bunch of other places. Why it had to go right there. Um, well, I'll just call that a mystery. But moving on. Yeah, I'm going to be painting it. And what I am going to go with is this... Uh, going to try this Tamiya Italian Red. And uh, one, it's a pretty good match to the plastic. So, you know, if I miss a little spot, who's going to know? Uh, and two, uh, it looks like a pretty nice red. Now, you notice I did chop up my sprues a bit. One of the big things I wanted to do was get the doors off to clean them up and make sure that they sit in the body, the cab, okay before I go any further because I wouldn't want to go and paint and start detailing and assembling and then finding the door doesn't close. So since I was with this kit, I'm able to have the doors free and the cab is already shaped. I can drop that door in there and see that that works pretty well. And as a double check, I did cut off the interior pan. That just pops in there and it has this notch to locate it in the back. There is a ridge inside here. There we go. That sets that whole thing up. So now I know how the cab will be once it's attached to that interior. And then I can lay my door in and see that that works out pretty well. And same for the other side. So that is that. Now I did, uh, as I said, I sectioned some of the sprues, uh, you know, to, whoops, stay along in the colors that I'll be painting. So like, this is all going to be spray painted black, so I can keep that together. Those are going to be white. Um, aside from these pieces, this will all be white. And uh, on the black sprue, everything is still there in one piece. This is an underframe member of the... Um, Firebots that will be black. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to start doing just a little bit of assembly because there are some things that don't make much sense that don't make any sense to uh, paint separately and then assemble afterwards, such as the uh, front grill for the cab that I'm just going to glue in there and that's set. And there's no point in painting and then removing paint to, to bond and all this stuff. So that's just going to go together. But bringing this sprue back out, the fuel tank, this equipment box, I'm going to assemble those things. I will probably do uh, some of the assembly steps on the frame as well. Get through here pages and pages of stuff so here we're working on the frame so i'm uh, going to do some of this assembly they do show the engine going in relatively early but i'll just leave the engine out i'll use it to side up um you know the, the uh, transfer case and drive line uh, otherwise you can build without the engine in place and it's no problem uh, because basically this is all going to be black underneath uh, I'm not going to go and start getting creative with detail because on a fire equipment vehicle, um, that just really wouldn't be <laughs> uh, fitting. So, you know, I, I don't feel like there's any space to play with that, so I will not. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to get some of the assembly going, get the paint going, and let this puppy start to take shape. Alrighty.
Okay, so been doing some building, been doing a lot of painting, so color, but uh, wanted to stop at this point and show some things in a little more detail. So first off, we have this beautiful chassis assembly, really nice, went together quite well. While all the parts are keyed to fit in their proper directions, because there is a lot of geometry going around, going on with uh, the suspension. Uh, there is a little bit of play in the parts, which may sound like a bad thing, but I actually found it to be a good thing because I was able to work with it a little bit to make sure it sits level as it does and that everything is straight. And I showed, you know, using the builder's mat, uh, you know, and the grid lines to make sure everything lines up. So that is good. Then I went and built it and then sprayed it uh, with the Tamiya uh, semi-gloss semi black. The engine was interesting because even though this is basically a, a curbside because the hood is not opening, the engine I found interesting because there are all of uh, four pieces <laughs> that constitute the build of the engine, but they're really nicely molded. And once it is in place, you know what? It, it looks pretty good in there. And basically you're only going to see it from the bottom. So um, everything that you need to see there is there. The belt is sort of hanging off in space here, but remember it's going to have that cab behind it that will all be flat black. So that will uh, gobble up the detail, so to speak. Um, you know, if there's one thing with the kit so far that I would have really preferred is that it did have an opening hood. Um, I'm sure that would have complicated the mold for the body because then this would have become very delicate through here. But you know what? I'll take the opening doors and forego the uh, engine compartment detail. Make your trades. <laughs> All right. Now, next thing I wanted to talk about uh, is the painting. So... There is a lot of little detail painting with this kit, which is fun because you really get to make your parts come alive as you do the paintwork. Now, these are some of the uh, equipment drawers and some of the equipment that will go in the rescue body. And, you know, it, it takes a little time, yes, but with a little brushwork and a little bit of, uh, you know, the Tamiya uh, black panel liner, you know, rubbing over things, you can bring out the uh, shadow lines and the hose here. And uh, with a little bit of paint, you know, you can really make everything stand out. Some things like, uh, I believe this is a water pump. Um, you know, I built it on the sprue so that I could paint it easier. Uh, it's only attached by the bottom. When it's time to mount it, I can snip and I won't have any numb mark from paint. Likewise, we have, this was our other big uh, gray sprue, so now it's all <laughs> silver. And uh, we have, which is going to be the mid plate inside the equipment body, some more drawers. Um, you know, the ladders, they are painted with red steps, so did that by brush. And what will be the roof. But what I really wanted to uh, talk about here uh, with the paint is looking at the red and to do the masking. Now, two of the panels of the uh, equipment body, this is the back, this is the passenger side where the doors do not open. And what I did, first of all, I had talked about, you know, you could get away with the red without spraying, but I think here, looking at it, whoops, side by side, you can see it looks uh, way better with the red paint. Now this is the uh, Tamiya Red, gloss red. I didn't prime, I just sprayed it right on top there um, and it, it came out really nice. I then masked off around the door, the sliding door. I sprayed it flat black first and then misted it on the uh, uh, metallic uh, silver and by doing it that way, 
all these detail lines inside the door retain their shadow and i hope the camera is picking it up uh, so you don't have to worry about going in there and doing you know a wash or anything it's all done for you unless you drop everything <laughs> so i just have to paint the handle for the door and this will be done um, as far as the interior i started working on this um, i just sprayed it black top and bottom i want the bottom black because uh, that's going to go on the chassis but in here I'm uh, just going to bring out some detail with the gray. Uh, this is a lighter gray, which I basically brushed on as a prime because that will then become, uh, be painted white. And then, you know, the seat platforms will go on here like so. And then the seat itself, I did do flat black and semi-gloss black to do some contrast in there between the blacks. But that's the plan with that. And some more little detail things. We have our nifty little chainsaw. And we have these two. Uh, I guess that's winch line. I'll assume so. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> but uh, that's where we're at. So, like I said, it's been a lot of building uh, to get to this point. The build, the kit goes together well. Uh, you know, because it's not a big fancy race car or anything. It, there is a lot of uh, black. It is somewhat monotone. But um, for all the construction that went in there, and there's quite a few parts, as you saw, to assemble this chassis and the suspension system, you know, it, it went together well, I am happy to say. So as I move on now and go into the, uh, you know, equipment body, for, uh, equipment for the rescue body, and then eventually the cab, hopefully that will continue uh, and there won't be any problems. And I can say that with a good measure of confidence because here we have the bottom of the interior. We had these two gigantic mounting part points and that will just clip in like so. And it sits nice and flush on the frame, which of course it's not going to hold because I'm not gluing it. But just to give you an idea, it does fit together quite nicely and nice solid contact points so it's not like this thing is going to be wobbling around trying to figure out the geometry to actually set it on so yeah oh and last thing you know flash there was a little bit of flash cleanup uh, you know this kit i believe has actually been around for a little while in uh, a couple of different forms i think when i was looking around but uh, despite that, or maybe uh, due to that, you know, there is a little bit of flash, but the molds are mostly clean. There was not much cleanup. Uh, so a pretty straightforward process to get it going. So back to building and painting. One other thing, painting. All right. So um, while the basic build of the truck does not use a whole lot of colors to do all that detail painting. Yes, uh, I've been going through a lot of my colors. Uh, if you watch the uh, the video after this, or which actually went live before this, uh, where I built my nifty little painting rack, if you remember, that was quite full. Uh, I, you know, I took a lot of paints off to do the painting, but I found some of my uh, paints that were, you know, dried up and crusted up and garbage, so they went away. But uh, this is another build where I can uh, once again say you know what once you've done a few kits you really don't need to buy paint so everything that you see here is what I had on my shelf I have bought zero paint to do the build and you know once you're a few kits into building this you won't have perhaps quite this much but you know you'll, you'll have a nice little palette that you can work with and um, it helps when you're doing these detail things because you can really look around at your colors and try to figure you know what would make this look good and make that look good and you know sometimes you may even think well you know i have this orange color uh why not use that and next thing i know my my um uh the handles on the tool are orange and my chainsaw is orange and you know i had this this is a blue spray but you know, again, it's another color I had sitting there. Well, why not use it? So um, you get a little bit of that freedom to experiment 
with your colors and which will then help bring up some of your small detail painting. Okay, so now I will get back to the building. Alrighty.
Okay, here we go with the Unimog, the Schlingmon Unimog RW1. Now, I have been doing, uh, you know, or looking to do a full uh, video build to show how the whole thing goes together. Uh, and pretty much did that. Had to step away from that with the cab because um, I just found it was a lot of, you know, hands in there and my face in there and no space for the camera in there. So I uh, just did a few JPEGs. Now the cab is a relatively simple assembly because really it's the detail pieces. Then uh, the doors go on and then the interior goes in. So it's not like the chassis where it's a lot of pieces coming together. And at this point, I have just glued the interior, uh, just glued the interior tub in there. So the doors and all this are just set in place and they do work. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out here was uh, I had to do a little fiddling with my knife to get the hinges to slot in there. Um, right in here it was pretty tight with the hinges pushing through so i just opened that up on the door and the cab side with my hobby knife and then no problem and as you can see the doors work just fine and they look really neat on there the uh pre-sizing that i did before assembly worked out well Yay. <laughs> there is just a little bit of friction, which is nice because that means when the door is closed, it will stay closed. The only thing I really had to do, the uh, little tread piece that I put here to give some detail to the interior, it was binding on the bottom of the door interior. So I just popped that out and I'm just going to scrape that down and repaint it. And then that will be good. But otherwise, as you can see, we are at the final stages of assembly. I just have the front bumper. Obviously, the cab has to go onto the chassis. You know, there's the drawers over here. I left those out because while I was working on the rescue body, they kept falling out and I didn't want to damage my paintwork and it was driving me nuts. So <laughs> I just uh, pulled them out and left them aside, but that's okay. They can slide right back in. The... Chassis and rescue body. Now you've uh, seen this get built up on the uh, video portion where I was getting everything together. But wow, what a what a nice unit! And I have to say, the kit has gone together great so far. Don't want to jinx it because I do have to get the cab on there, and uh, you know, don't don't want to speak before. The last stage of things is done. Now, I'll tilt that so we get a little more light in there. But, yes, everything's going together well. I must say this has been taking a little bit longer than I thought because um, there was a lot of painting. I did my painting all in stages. Uh, there was a lot of masking and countermasking to get, like, the silver with the red and all of this and priming for some colors and not for the red. So, but... Uh, you know, just being patient with it, it is all working out just fine, which is nice to know that with all that effort, the kit is not fighting me <laughs> and it's, you know, the final uh, execution phase of things. So that's a really good note for the assembly. So uh, just wanted to put that little bit in there and uh, now it's just mounting. There's a few more decals, just a few pieces, the side mirrors um, that need to go on. And uh, this is just about done. Yay. So took a little bit longer than I thought, like I said, but, um, you know, don't want to speak before I had the cab on, like I said. But, you know, so far, wow, what a what a nice kit. So you will notice, too, that, um, well, well, if you have built the kit or you have the instructions in front of you, <laughs> I did deviate a little bit on the paint and decal scheme. I decided to go with the white roof because I thought that was a real nice contrast to complement the white fenders. Although that is not supposed to be the paint scheme for the uh, Hansa, 
Hamburg uh, municipality, which is what I am going with on my decals. But there were extra decals on here, and I thought, why not use them? So, um, you know, I put these telephone number decals here on the side, even though uh, they apparently call somewhere in uh, the Netherlands. <laughs> Maybe it's a long distance rescue call, but I just thought that they looked neat on there. So on they went. I have a little bit of touch up painting to do underneath here because uh, this should be all flat black since there is no underhood detail. I don't want that to look silly underneath there or rough, I should say, but otherwise all good. So I'm going to get this together and then it will be final assembly reveal. Okay. Okay, so here we go. It's final build reveal time for the Ravel Unimog Schlingman RW1 rescue truck. And there it is. So, I will start by saying, what a neat machine. <laughs> now, yes, as I said in the beginning of this uh, build project that, you know, the Unimog, I, I just think, is, is such a neat machine, such a cool truck. Uh, and this kit does not disappoint in representing it. It's a really, at least in, in my experience, it's just a unique kit, uh, loaded with detail as we see it come around here. Uh, you know, that there's just so many different opportunities with this to, to have fun, drilling down picking out little things um just lo lots you can do with it so and a lot of fun to build and in the end you end up with a, a really nice result now uh big question with things like this of course is well does the kit agree with you <laughs> in that effort and fortunately as i had indicated earlier in the build you know the kit goes together really well Yes, there are some small pieces. Uh, there are some delicate assemblies. And in its finished form, as with any kit that has tons of, of little details on it, it is, it's a fragile kit. So once you build it, you know, not that any model is really meant to be played with, but uh, because of the amount of detail on here, it is, uh, you know, somewhat... Uh, fragile and certainly needs uh, care in handling. In fact, uh, at the very end of the build, I did break off my exhaust pipe, just handling it, mounting the cab and making sure that was all settled in there correctly, but no big deal. I glued it back in, but just really nice. Uh, the only thing that I found to be a bit of a challenge with this were the decals, not that they went on poorly, just that some of them particularly these tire inflation decals, they're really tiny. 
And, um, you know, if you've had any experience with, with water slides, uh, when they get really small like this, it, it's sort of tough to, to get them settled down in place, lined up the way you want without them sort of <laughs> wandering off on their own. But that's just a matter of uh, experience, one, and certainly uh, patience, number two. Now, uh, another thing I want to address in terms of the build experience in the beginning of the uh, the episode when I was going through what they provide in the box I talked about the uh, hose they provide for you uh, they gave you some wiring and they gave some metal grate to add the protective covers for the headlights and as you can see those are not on my truck and if you don't remember that's these guys right here well when i went to work with that metal grating i found that uh you know it it was just a folded mesh and um you know as soon as you would start to cut it the mesh would come apart so I realized, okay, so I laid in some uh, crazy glue to fix all those points so it wouldn't flex like it does now. And all right, it was nice and solid. I went to cut it and I made uh, three attempts. And every time I was clipping and trimming, the whole thing started to come apart. So I decided uh, I've had my fill <laughs> and I will not be using it. So... Uh, that went by the wayside. That obviously is on me and uh, probably did not uh, handle it correctly, but whatever. Uh, it's not on there. The other thing was the wiring for these lights. In the kit, they provide you with a yellow wire, but on the finished kit, that is supposed to be black wire. Um, why didn't they didn't give you, uh, Ravel did not supply you with black wire to start instead of giving you yellow wire that you are then supposed to paint. I found sort of an odd decision on their part, but whatever, you know, um, I uh, came across some black wire. I have it listed in the supplies for the kit. So I bought it and um, used that in, in lieu of the yellow so that I didn't have to paint because uh, if you ever tried to paint wire, um, you know, as soon as the wire flexes a bit, the paint falls off so there you go and last but not least the hosing up top that is supposed to represent the uh, fire hose that was like a um, wire bundle with a cloth sheath on it which is supposed to represent the hose uh, but when I cut it that was and I did cut it with a you know a, a sharp knife um, that did fray and made a mess so I did my little trick with the uh, duct tape, cut some strips, wrapped it around uh, to look like a hose coupling, so to speak. I filled the open ends with my um, Tamiya clear part cement so it wasn't just a raw mess there. And then flat black to the rescue. <laughs> Once again, uh, you know, flat black, the black hole of detail. And as it comes around, you can see... There's really nothing to see there now, which is kind of what I wanted because I don't want anything seen there. And then I just uh, tucked them into place here. So this one turned a bit. So there, see it? We'll lay that right down in there. And there we go. So I didn't want to glue it because there's really not any good contact area there for the tubing. I didn't want to damage the uh, cloth sheath or my paint so it's just laying there as is all right enough of that now uh, extras aside from uh, replacing the wire uh, there were only um, two spots where I really deviated from what was supplied in the kit uh, one on the steering you're supposed to do a heat crimp to secure the tie rod uh, I've said in other build videos, I do not like doing heat crimps. I am not good at doing that. So I showed how I fashioned uh, two washers and a sprue, just 
cutting it lengthwise, uh, cross section, drilling a hole, and then pushing that up on the steering knuckle pin, and that was that. And then the other thing I did, um, these two decals are actually dry rub decals uh, from uh, a Gundam kit. I just put those on there. And oh, the third thing, the little V groove uh, I put into the cab floor to simulate the, uh, you know, like a matting uh, type effect. But otherwise, stock out of the box. Um, and with a kit like this, you know, one of the nice things is you don't really have to go getting all sorts of aftermarket stuff and everything. There's so much here to work with. And because the kit goes together well, um, you know, depending at your experience level, skill level, how crazy you want to go with the deca detailing, you, you can take it as far as you want to go. I wanted to build fairly faithful to the box art. That's what attracted me to the kit, as is often the case. Uh, and I was able to uh, pretty well achieve what I wanted. And, you know, that was uh, that was good news for me. <laughs> so, in terms of the appropriateness for building this, uh, based on your experience, you know, it's certainly not a starter model. But given the way the kit goes together, you know, it... Even if you've just done, you know, a kit or two, I, I think this is certainly doable. Um, some of the decals might prove a, a little bit of a headache if you're not too experienced with doing that. But certainly all these little detail pieces, I think, will give you really great experience in working with things like that and trying to figure out, you know, color schemes and how things complement. I mentioned before the uh, roof for the... Uh, Hazestad Hamburg municipality version of this should have been red, but I thought the white would go white on the roof, which is uh, one of the other versions of the truck. They show that in the paint guide, but I thought the white roof with the white fenders would, would be a nice little color offset, and there you go. Now, as far as functionality, uh, you see I have the equipment doors raised. They do slide out and drop down, you know, um, do they work? Yes. Am I inclined to leave them closed? Uh, no, <laughs> because after doing all that detail work, I want to see the stuff in there. Um, you know, I could have gone ahead and, and glued the doors in place, but I decided to leave them loose. So, you know, if I'm sitting here working on some other model, I, I can play with them. <laughs> the likewise, the, uh, assorted equipment drawers in there. I do not have them glued in place they are loose and can be pulled out which i don't have my tweezers in my hand but do need the tweezers to pull them out these four drawers um if you want it as well you can glue them half out and you know have a permanent display the steering as well is posable um nice little feature i i do like that on models and of course we have the opening doors there we go to really show off that nice nice interior and again getting back to the idea of the decals the decals on this kit uh, you know when you build technical things like this uh, trucks you know equipment having those little uh, placard decals and the, the different gauges and stuff really make the kit pop and i think it's just so cool seeing it with the doors open like this yes it would have been nice if the hood was openable but you know the way the unimog is that engine is actually sitting low and back so most of it you wouldn't be able to see anyway it's actually tucked into that doghouse style uh dashboard extension there so that's just fine and when it comes around again, we'll take a look at the underbody just to show that off because it is, as you got to see while I was building it, it is a completely detailed undercarriage and that just built up so nice. And to show that, so, you know, you get the full four wheel drive, all the suspension elements are there airbag suspension 
all your control linkages, you know, really great stuff. Flat black on the bottom of the equipment box and the cab to hide that it is in effect a curbside kit. Uh, but at this point with everything else going on and detail parts falling off because I didn't want to glue them, whatever, <laughs> you know, um, not that you would be tipping the kit to see it, but being that it's there and the way the Unimog is designed and the way it's represented in this kit, you can see quite a bit of that just from looking at it in the, the assorted side views and whatnot. So there we go. That is the Ravel Schlingmann Unimog RW1. Fantastic kit. Uh, if you get a chance to build it, if you're into this type of subject matter, can't recommend this enough. Uh, just take your time with it. Be patient. You know, indulge yourself on the detail work and you'll have something really special, really unique to, to add to your shelf of kits, your repertoire of assembly efforts. So I will wrap this up now. Uh, would just like to say I'm actually filming this on uh, New Year's Eve. So 2024 is uh, around the corner and about another, I think, hour and a half or something like that. I plan to be asleep by then <laughs> after working midnights for several decades uh, at midnight. I'm in bed. <laughs> I don't want to be awake for anything <laughs> because for many years I had to do it to go to work. So, but in any event, point being happy new year. Enjoy your new year of hobbying in particular. Uh, and, you know, I just look forward to uh, another year of uh, building and, and sharing these build experiences with you. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, you know, your subscribing comments, you know, the views, everything just, um, you know, encourages me to share more with this and, um, you know, let you see a little bit more into this wonderful hobby. So, I'll end it at that. I'm going to hop in my truck, close my doors here, and I uh, might have to go off and do a little rescue work. <laughs> All right, so that's that. Thank you for watching. Please do, if you have not already, uh, subscribe, you know, like all that dandy YouTube stuff. So until the next build, have a happy and healthy.